myself, my name is Carl Lloyd. I'm currently part of the product team and I provide product or pr partner support. And we also, my team also works on platform development. So we focus on Canvas as a platform, uh, extending Canvas to be available and as easy as possible to integrate using standards. Um, just a little bit about myself. I've been with Canvas or with the instructor for two years. And overall, I have roughly about 12 years of experience in working with technical integrations, integration system to system, uh, data integrations, things like that. Uh, real quickly, I just want to uh, introduce my development team. They're sitting right here. I've got Brad, Nathan, and Eric. They're, they're my three developers. And uh, with the three that we have here, we've done Edu App Center, Canvas App Center. Uh, we're currently working on uh, 30 partner integrations. Um, so, uh, assisting, so uh, yeah, we're really busy. The things I want to talk about today, I'm going to talk about LTI. Um, a lot of people, I can see a lot of people in the room are very familiar with LTI, but I want to just bring it down <coughs> to basics. For those that are not familiar with it, we'll talk about Edu App Center and what you can do with Edu App Center, such as uh, filtering, searching, creating whitelist. If you have private apps at your institution, you can use uh, Edu App Center to bring those into your Canvas App Center. Uh, we'll talk about how the partner apps, how they make it into the App Center. And then last, I'll talk a little bit, just really briefly, about our Canvas development community. So LTI Basics. Uh, when I first started, I actually started on this team a year ago. Uh, in fact, InstructureCon was my first week on the team. And uh, one of the things that uh, Brian Whitmer was our, our, kind of our leader at the time, he said, hey, learn everything you want to know about LTI. So the first thing I did, is I went out to the IMS Global um, specifications and I saw something like this. And I was like, what? <laughs> and honestly, it felt a lot like this. <laughs> as, I, as I went through the documentation. And so I'm going to simplify it. As, I'm going to dumb it down as much as I feel comfortable doing it. It's, it's something to not be intimidated by. But LTI stands for Learning Tools Interoperability and really it's a protocol for when uh, integration launches within Canvas, when a user clicks on that link that launches the tool, we send some data behind the scenes and we send it to the tool and they use that to identify who the user is, the course, uh, just some basic information and then they use that to launch them into their system. And then in return, some applications have the opportunity or the ability to use LTI outcomes to send grades back into Canvas. And that's really LTI in a nutshell. Um, so I wanted to ask this, when I mentioned LTI, I wanted, what type of emotion does that evoke? Because I think in the room we have, we have developers and we've got some partners. I see John Tibbetts, he's a big LTI guy. He's thumbs up, so he doesn't feel this way when he thinks about LTI. Yeah, we talked yesterday. Yeah, I think some administrators, it's really overwhelming. And in reality, we all should be feeling this way when we think about integrations in LTI. And here's an example. This was something that Troy, our K-12 partnership manager, put together for me. He did a side-by-side -side comparison. So on the left-hand side is embedding content into Canvas using Khan Academy, doing it manually. And on the right-hand side is using the Khan Academy LTI link. And so on the right-hand side, they're going to the tool. And on the left-hand side, they're actually going to the Khan Academy website and searching for the, contact, or the content to embed into the wiki page within Canvas. And on the right hand side, uh, right hand side, it's actually done. And so that user actually has some time to look at some YouTube videos. So this person gets a little bit of, a little bit of extra time. LTI makes the it makes one thing, it makes it seem more seamless for a user to go from our system from Canvas into another person's system or even your own system. You can have, you can integrate your own systems within Canvas. Uh, I, I've, I, yeah, I've worked with some of you uh, to do that. And just real quickly, I wanted to talk about, we talked about Edu App Center and Canvas App Center. They're essentially the same thing. We actually feed the Canvas App Center via APIs that are available through eduappcenter.com. And so when, when apps are listed there, they automatically feed into the Canvas App Center based on uh, the information that's provided. So using a LTI, that's a standard by M IMS Global, and then Edu App Center and Canvas, and when we combine all those, we get something really awesome. 
So let's talk about Edge App Center real quick. So I have a pre-recorded demo. And here you can see that we have, many of you probably have been to the site, but if you haven't, we have over 140 apps available through eduappcenter.com. You can search through the apps. We have different, uh, uh, you can see that you can select, uh, we'll select Khan Academy here and see some information about the application. There's tagging uh, that tags by um, the LTI extensions. So if it shows up on the left hand nav or in the editor button, uh, if the preview is available, you can actually launch the application just to see what it looks like. Um, if the partner or the application developers put a video, it'll show up in there as well. And then there's a little bit of information on there. You can also sort by a category. So for example, science, open content, uh, math. Uh, we di have different items in there. You can look for all the content that's free that doesn't require a key and secret. Or you can look for content that maybe is provided by a provider that's restricting access to that application. And last, you can see uh, there's a most recent filter. This actually shows the apps that by, the, by their entry date into Edu App Center. So it's an easy way to go out and see what the most recent applications that have been added to the App Center. That you just saw was a feedback. So you can send questions that go to my team. And then very lastly, this is a Twitter feed. We just barely added this to eduappcenter.com. And we'll be providing updates as we add applications. You can uh, get updates on new applications that are added. And then also if we deprecate an application because maybe their system doesn't work or um, we had a chat tool that was really cool, but the service, uh, the person that was providing the service took it down. So we had them remove that out of the App Center. I often get asked a lot how applications get into eduappcenter.com and um, really that's a question that it really depends on the, on the relationship that they have with us. In the partner program there's three levels of partnership that starts with a community level which is everybody's invited to. Anybody that's created an education based application and uses LTI is welcome to submit their application or their app to Eduapp Center. For those applications, we don't do a whole lot of testing. We make sure that all the information's there. We make sure there's a valid launch URL. Sorry about that. We also uh, make sure that it installs e easily. Um, when we step up in the partnership tier, we go to a certified partnership. And that's where they have a formal relationship. They pay to be uh, a little bit in our partnership program. We, in those cases, I require them to have documentation, to give me a demo. Uh, we are heavily involved with their uh, integration as they've developed the integration. We get uh, these guys, I get these guys on the phone with their development team, and uh, we work through that. So there's a lot more information that gets passed back and forth, and we go through more of a approving process. And then the last is the tier is the premier partnership and the, and the process to approve that is the same as uh, certified. So we, same thing, we go through with the development, we see a demo, we ask for some documentation to be available to our users. Some of you have uh, seen this um, and the adopt, I've last looked, there's quite been a quite an adoption rate of using whitelist within Canvas. Uh, since we launched EduApp Center in middle of March, um, what this does, if you're not familiar with it, is you can take the App Center, you can take 140 apps, and maybe at your institution, you only want to have maybe 25 apps available to your instructors. You can go through Edu App Center, and you can create a whitelist. We'll actually uh, go through this process now, but you can create a whitelist that pars down that list and will only expose those 25 that your institution approves to your users. Uh, one thing, if you uh, go into Edu App Center, you need an account, you can link your account if you already have uh, accounts with Google, Facebook, Twitter, or GitHub. Or you can create a new login uh, using your email if you don't want to link up one of, your, uh, one of your existing accounts. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. Once I log in, it goes to the home page, and I have a new item at the top. And it's the admin. <laughs> I can go down to organizations, and here I want to create my organization. And in this case, it's going to be something, probably your institution name, and maybe a department, you, you know, depending on 
what the relationship with you and Canvas is. Uh, and in here I just put K12 demo for the organization for the whitelist. So you'll put this in there. It's important to note that there's this uh, box here that says show apps without having to pre-approve them. That doesn't mean that I'm not pre-approving you know, or that I'm, you know, you're relying on us. Basically, if we add an app to the App Center and you have that box checked, if you're 25 apps, we add three more apps, you'll have, 20, you'll have those three new apps. So mm -hmm. you have 23, or 28 apps in your App Center. Once you go in, you can see uh, you can have this managed whitelist. And here, once you go in, you can see all the applications, and by default, they're hidden. And you can go through and you can select and make visible the applications that you desire to be available within the Canvas uh, App Center. So I'm going to go through. I, um, in this, I selected uh, pretty much all the apps that we've, that we've uh, owned. Uh, some of you know that Brian Whitmer's created, created a bunch of apps when we launched this last year at InstructureCon. We've uh, rebuilt some of these apps and officially taken them on uh, as, owner, as owned by us. So I'm going to go ahead and add those to my whitelist. While, the, while this is going, just by show of hands, is there anybody that's been through this process and is using the whitelist functionality? We got one, two, great. All right, so I've selected my, my applications that I'm going to put in my whitelist. The next step, what I need to do is I need to go back out to my organization and there was another, another item at the top called uh, Manage Keys. This is where I can create an API token. So I'll go ahead and select that token. This token you want to give to your uh, customer uh, success manager or whoever your contact is for a relationship. And they'll go in and they'll plug it in behind the scenes in the background in Canvas. And that'll make the App Center available. So here I'm going to my, to my account. I'm going to look. I see all my application, all the apps as default in the App Center, so it'll take a second. Okay, so I can see all 140 plus applications. Now behind the scenes, I, um, what I'm doing is going behind the scenes and adding that token to my Canvas account. And now you can see that I have seven, the seven applications that I chose and I've restricted down for my, for my Canvas account. What happens if you go in and you can't get the those stolen features and you just get that? Uh, those applications will still work. Okay. Yeah, and honestly, teachers could honestly, they'd still have the ability to grab that launch URL out of EdDrop Center and manually install the application. So one of, the, one of the items that we heard from a lot from universities is that we started, we started finding out, and um, I, I see two schools here that have their own development teams uh, that are building their own LTI applications. Uh, one of the items that we added with Edu App Center, oh, you had a question? Uh, just wondering if you can do the whitelist thing at subaccount level. No, that's not currently available, but it's something we are uh, scoping out. and and looking into. We've had that, I've had that request personally a lot. Um, okay, so back to private apps. So we do have schools. Um, we're starting to work more, finding out that they have their own development teams. They have their own systems that they want to integrate into Canvas that they have on campus. And so with EduApp Center, we built the ability for you to go into your account and add your own private applications. And really, it, it's fairly simple. Once you're logged into the system, you can select to submit an application. And there's, uh, there's information. And, and if you're not an LTI developer um, or familiar with LTI, some of this information uh, may not make sense to you. But uh, one of the cool things that we did with EduApp Center is we integrated an XML builder to build the XML uh, configuration for LTI tools. And so here I'm building one from scratch. And on the left-hand side, as I, as I put in my elements, is like name, LTI launch URL. If I want to uh, specify an image for the icon, I can decide where I want in Canvas my LTI tool to show up, whether it's 
the left hand navigation or uh, to show up in um, the editor button or to utilize resource selection which is in some of the apps you've seen resource selection is where the modal pops up and then you can select content and then embed that into modules or within pages. But as, you, as I added that information on the left hand side it dynamically at, created the XML on the right hand side. Uh, one thing to make sure is that when you do this that you leave it at private um, otherwise, if it shows up as public, it shows up in my queue to test and then I'll be reaching out to, to see what's going on with your application. So I've uh, gone, there's a tool, internal tool I'm using as an example. It's just a tool that we use um, for testing LTI applications. I'm putting that information in uh, to demo. Oh, sure. Uh, simple question. Is this live right now? No, this is pre recorded. Oh, well, no, I, I know that. But the, uh, no, no, this is available. Yeah, yeah, this is available right now. So, uh, the XML builder, I had no idea that that was moved under the login part. So, I just use that under LTI examples. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's always possible, but uh, what I would say is that I would encourage you to create a login because one thing that the XML builder does today is that you build a configuration. If you have like a base configuration that you use a lot, you can reuse that for to build out multiple configurations. Okay. Thank you. Is there any other questions while this is? Yeah, go ahead, Eric. Um, Okay, so going back, so this is the tool. Um, it's just an internal tool that we use, but I, I, for these purposes, it shows up in my apps. I can see it if I go to the organization. I can see it that I have an app listed now. If I select on it, I can go. There's multiple places uh, that you can go and see the application um, in there. And so um, what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to refresh, and you're not going to see the tool. And the reason why I did that is because there's a little bit of caching involved on this page. So if you add an app and you don't see it right away, don't freak out. It's it's coming. It'll it'll show up. And so I'm going in here and I'm just going to double check and make sure that it was it's added to my whitelist. I see that it is. It's visible. And by the time I go back, the the caching will be cleared. And the tool's right there in the middle on the top row. So I can select that and then now users can install the tool from the Canvas App Center. Just last, I wanted to give a plug for our Canvas Dev and Friends community. It's at instructor.github.io. On this site, we have multiple uh, resources for developers. We have our API documentations. You can request a Canvas developer key for API access. Uh, we have our source code, or a link to our source code for Canvas. And there's also information on our IRC uh, Freenode channel. And also there's a Google mailing list. So your development teams or um, people that are working on integrations with Canvas can go in there and ask questions. And they can be answered by those within the community or are, we have a handful of engineers that are constantly monitoring that and providing assistance as needed. So sometimes you can go to your CSMs and ask them or sometimes you can go right here and get, get an answer directly. So it's just another option. So just last, I uh, just wanted to, to say that if you want to get a hold of us and if you have any questions, you can get a hold of me and my team at Partner Support at instructure.com and then I'm going to be putting these slides in the discussion that's in the Canvas course for the for InstructureCon and then there's a couple other uh, presentations to take note 
uh, from our team. Uh, Bracken's done one on standards and LTI, and that's already taken place and will be available on YouTube. And then on our partnership program, if you want to find out more information about that, the presentation provided by Mike Zacherson and Troy Anderson will also be available uh, shortly after the conference. And then tomorrow, uh, Brad Humphrey, uh, one of our developers, will be doing, uh, he's calling it, what, the LT LTI2? <laughs> but he's going to be talking about LTI2 and what's that, what that's going to bring to Canvas. And so that'll be, a, that'll be a great presentation. It's right at the end of the day. It's in the last block tomorrow. So uh, is there any questions? Yeah. There are a lot of uh, example code that allows for, uh, like, for example, just using, mixing some of the uh, new GPU app center. And that was a really huge uh, resource that I used, some of my teams used, and I even you know, sent it out on the uh, Canvas LMS uh, chat room. Is there any possibility of being some more of those added more example that? Uh, code tomorrow? Uh, to repeat the question he was asking about, um, in the previous site, eduapps.org, we had example code, LTI example code, based on uh, XML uh, configurations by LTI extension. We, I believe that's available now in, edu in here under the docs section. I'll double check with it and get back and I'll get with you. Yeah, go ahead. For a partner? Uh, so the question is, uh, what's the typical turnaround time? Honestly, we don't have a set time, and really that depends on what my workload is, because I'm really the tester. Um, but I try to get those, um, I try to at least go in and initially test those as soon as I see them, and then reach out with questions. Um, sometimes I don't have all the information I need to contact the partner to get, the, to get those approved, and so it takes a little while to get connected. But we try to do those as quickly as we can. That's a good question. His question's about when creating the whitelist. Is there a way to just quickly filter? Um, is there filter options? You know, his example is to just choose all the free ones. That's not currently available, but uh, it's uh, something that we've started looking at. Uh, one thing that we recently did is we added a column for the privacy levels. So uh, it didn't show it on here, but uh, in the very near future, when you go in and you see that list of applications, it's going to show the, the privacy levels. Uh, that we know of. So you can say, um, it, maybe I want to pick all the on anonymous privacy levels or the public privacy levels. And we'll continue to make advancements to the, to the whitelist capabilities. If you have suggestions like that, feel free to email me. <laughs> like ones you don't want installed at all? This question was about blacklist. Um, I mean, through the whitelist, you can make that. I mean, that kind of works. Um, like, but if there's just one example, uh, you can you can go in and there's a. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a feature to to select them all, right? And then you could. Yeah. So when you first created that checkbox, when you're in the organization, automatically approve future apps. Um, I mean, that's essentially creating a blacklist for us rather than white. So it's a big deal. Yeah. This is terminology. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs>